Hi, everybody. So glad that you're here. My name is Raylan Klein, and I am an admissions counselor here at Azusa Pacific University. We're just really glad that you're here, really excited that you are taking the right steps to learn more about your major. So if you are here, it's most likely that you're interested in studying either psychology, social work, or criminal justice. And we have amazing faculty and students here to just answer any questions that you have. So we're just, again, just really excited that you're here and excited to answer some questions. So with that being said, um, if you scroll down or if you move your mouse a little bit, the bottom, there's a Q&A box. Um, go ahead and click that. And if you have questions, you can just go ahead and ask away. We, that's what we are here for. We just wanna answer your questions and clarify things for you. Um, so you can ask questions specifically about your major that you're interested in, or you can ask um, any admissions, uh, admissions questions, or you can ask questions to the students here. So we're gonna go ahead and transition into some introductions. And I think first we're gonna go with social work. So why don't you introduce yourself, Professor Guzman? Thanks, Ray Lynn. Uh, I'm Professor Daniel Guzman, and I'm the Field Education Coordinator in the Department of Social Work. Uh, I've been with APU for three years now, and what I do is I actually help students get placed at their senior year internship. So we do that, and then I also conduct field seminar where we talk about what students are practicing in the field at their internship and how to connect that to the education that they got through their first uh, two years of the program. But it's great to be with you and I'm glad that you joined tonight. Melanie? Great, yes, hi guys, my name is Melanie Naranjo. I am um, a professor in the Department of Psychology and I'm also the program director for our regional psychology campuses. Um, I've been teaching in the department for about four years now and I primarily teach some of the undergrad courses um, like general psychology, writing two, human growth and development and I've been overseeing um, some of our welcoming committees in the psych department as well. I also have some two um, phenomenal students with me here tonight. Celeste and Matthew are here to answer the student perspective of the psychology department. So I will let them introduce themselves real quick. Celeste, why don't you go first? Sure, thanks for calling me amazing. <laughs> uh, my name is Celeste. I am a senior psychology and honors humanities major actually. Um, I'm also the vice president of APU's Black Student Association. And I co-lead an activism group on campus called Disciples in Action. And I do psych research on a psych research team, which is super wonderful. You should definitely get involved in that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's busy, but it's great. And APU is very supportive and our psych program has a lot of exciting things to offer. So busy, but enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, hi guys, my name is Matthew. Um, I'm a second year um, psychology student at APU um, on campus. I'm also part of the Alpha program, um, which is the transition team here at APU. Um, maybe one day next year, I'll be able to lead one of your guys' groups. Um, we're focusing on helping students transition um, from high school or for community college or any other walk of life, um, specifically freshmen and transfer students into their time at APU. Um, outside of the Alpha program in the psychology department, I'm um, also similar to Celeste involved in research, um, which is a super cool opportunity that you guys have to get involved in as soon as freshman year. Um, generally students start in their upper, div um, upper two years, junior, senior, but as a sophomore, I already have that opportunity. Um, so definitely ask around, ask your professors um, and they'll help you guys get more involved in the psychology department. Awesome, thank you guys. And I believe Ralph Rocha wants to present. So if you wanna introduce yourself first and then you can do your presentation. That'd sure, awesome. sure, thank you. Can, you. can everybody hear me? I'm live, okay. Uh, my name is Ralph Rocha. I am an adjunct professor here at APU in the uh, criminal justice department. I've been teaching at APU since about 2009 um, in a different department. Um, in criminal justice, with the criminal justice department, I've been teaching in our department since about 2016, almost since the inception of our program. Um, our program was started in 2015. So I've been around for a little while. I've been around APU for, for a good minute and um, I have a pretty good feel for the university and for um, the dynamics of the university. And um, I've had the privilege since I've been here, I um, received a master's degree 
from APU in 2009. I think I became a graduate student in 2007. And, um, and I know a lot of old timers from APU and there's a lot of rich history um, with APU. And um, I got to know a lot of good professors over the years. And, um, and so it's, it's definitely heartfelt, you know, my affiliation with Azusa Pacific University. I was also raised in Azusa half of my life. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's a strong connection to the university and to the, um, to the people who formed it. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to answer questions. So I'm going to go ahead and open my screen now and um, start with my presentation. And feel free to stop me along the way if anybody has any questions. Um, yeah, just, just feel free to just jump in and ask. Can everybody see that? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, awesome, awesome. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a presentation on the criminal justice department. I'm gonna kind of do a brief overview on the department um, and we'll, we'll go ahead and start out with the demographics of our department. So uh, we're entering our sixth year as a department. So we're fairly young. Uh, we're probably one of the younger departments on campus. Um, it's interesting because I think I told you when I was a, a graduate student way back in the day, 2007, um, my undergrad was in criminal justice. And um, I had always wanted, I, I had always hoped that AP would have a criminal justice uh, degree. And so lo and behold, in 2015, the, uh, the university actually begin a program, a criminal justice program. So as of right now, we have uh, about 147 uh, people in the program. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of dominated by females. We have 57% female um, and we have a pretty good mix uh, demographically of Hispanics, whites, blacks, Asian, uh, American Indian, uh, Alaskan native, about 30, uh, th about 37% minority in that respect. Uh, we have five full-time faculty and we have a ton of adjunct professors, which makes the program pretty interesting because most of our adjunct professors are have worked in the field. Um, so we have a good mix of sort of practical, you know, and theoretical and academic. Um, a lot of our full-time faculty have uh, worked as police officers, lawyers, um, and I know a lot of them. Um, I'm actually one of them. So it's 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 a great mix. And um, let me jump to the next slide. So basically, uh, you know, we're we're kind of, you know, I think to anybody who's new to the criminal justice uh, discipline, you would ask, you know, what what is criminal justice? Because when we think about criminal justice, I I think a lot of people think of police and um, courts and, and things like that, which is true, which is true. And I think traditionally it's been sort of confined to that, to criminal justice, but really criminal justice is the study of social control. So we look at social control and then we also look at more practical things. And when we talk about social control, we sort of talk, we're sort of talking about criminology and where soci sociology uh, comes into the mix. You know, what, what causes people to commit crimes and how do we prevent that? Um, but then there's also a more practical side to it, which is we look at the process of the criminal justice system. We study police, law enforcement, we study the legal system, courts, and we also study corrections. And so we, we have classes that really get into that uh, we have classes in um, in police patrol procedure where we get into uh, the introduction of criminal justice, for instance, which would uh, introduce a student to, like I said, more of the practical aspects. It's sort of a if, sort of a good overview of uh, of the behavior of criminality and how police officers and law enforcement sort of do their work. Uh, we we have classes on courts in the criminal justice system and then also corrections. So um, let me 
jump to the next slide here. So really criminology is interesting because criminal justice is, is an interdisciplinary uh, discipline or subject. So we study, we have criminology, which is kind of like one facet of criminal justice. And then we actually have criminal justice. And at APU, our, our discipline, we sort of merge them together. So criminology is more of like the theoretical part of it. It's sort of like what causes people to commit crimes? It's sort of the um, psychological aspect of it. And we get into the more of the sociology aspect of it as well. So how do we prevent crimes? Um, how do we punish crimes? What are the, like I said, what are the causes of crime? That's sort of what we um, think. Those are some, some of the things we think about when we think about um, the study of criminal behavior and criminology. Whereas criminal justice, is a little different, um, but you know we take a historic um, sort of approach to studying social control and crime. Um, we a lot of our professors will jump into the current issues of the day, depending on the class that's being taught. You know, um, our students are going to get exposed. You know, criminal justice. It's interesting to teach because. It can be controversial. Um, it it can be a little. Um, it can be a little. Um, mm, as a professor, you know, when you're talking about the violence that just just happened at the Capitol building, or you're talking about Black Lives Matters or Antifa, or the riots happening in in Portland, um, it's a little risky, you know. And a lot of times that incites emotion. But that's part of our field, and those are the things that we deal with. Um, you know, for instance, uh, a class I was teaching this week, we talked about the death penalty and the Eighth Amendment and, uncru and cruel and unusual punishment. Um, so, I think it's good because it really sets our students up for thinking about working in in the criminal justice system, and it kind of starts to open up their minds to hey. You know, these things are real. Um, they exist in society. They're not just things we read about in the news. But um, if I do go into this field as whether, whether it's a probation officer or a police officer, a lawyer, a district attorney, or a social worker, these are some of the realities I'm gonna be facing. So we start to expose our students to these things early on in the program. And, um, and sometimes it can be a little raw. You know, sometimes, you know, we're talking about you know, in, my, in one of the classes I'm teaching right now, which is criminal law, we're talking about murder, we're talking about rape, we're talking about robbery, we're talking about what constitutes things like that. Um, but it's a good thing, you know, because they're never in shock. I had a student uh, today email me about how he could prepare himself to work in the criminal justice system. And, uh, and I told him he had a leg up just um, by the mere fact that he was in the program and that he was obtaining his degree in criminal justice because you're gonna be exposed to so much more than you would otherwise be had you not entered the program. So, um, so it's, uh, it's awesome in that respect. Uh, you just, yeah, so we put, we put up a couple of slides here. Um, the department has a lot of connections in the community. We have a, a whole um, network of people that, that we're, we're linked to. We, uh, like I said, we have a lot of adjunct instructors or professors who work in the system. We have people who have been police captains, police chiefs, uh, police lieutenants. I have a lot of people I bring in. I've brought into my class friends of mine who are FBI agents, uh, secret service members, lawyers, so we have a whole slew of people that we connect with. And I think it's really great because it's practical. You know, we're able to, after people graduate, we're able to, and even before they graduate from, from the program, we're able to, to kind of connect them to people who can help them get jobs, who can be resources for them. And um, so, you know, and we continue to do that. We continue to network with the law enforcement community and it's not only police, um, it's, it's a number of different professions. Like I said, it's social work, um, it's the courts, it's uh, lawyers, 
um, in, in its corrections. So um, we're able to, uh, I think, give our students a, a really good foundation for going into the for going into the field, just given that we have so many different connections and we have a really good network of people that we work with in the department. So uh, we offer a lot of class tours um, and, and which is part of it, which is part of the whole connection thing. Uh, we've taken our, our students to Homeboy Industries in LA. We've given our students uh, tours of the courthouse, the Superior Courthouse in downtown Los Angeles, the uh, 211 West Temple building. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll periodically do things like that, depending on the class. Uh, we've, we've taken our students even down to shooting ranges and police departments and things like that. So, um, so I, I think just, just going back to our, our discipline and our program in particular, it's, it's really a good mix, I think, of practical and theoretical. You know, if you take a criminal justice class or at a community college, um, typically what they call them is administration of justice classes, they're very, they're very practical. You're gonna you typically take a class um, that's being taught by a police officer or a retired police officer, and it's gonna be very hands-on it's going to be a lot about what they do and about the process. So we do a good mix of that. We do a good mix of that, but not only the practical part of it, but also the theoretical part of it. Like I said, into the criminology side, you know, what what causes people to to behave um, in you know um, deviant ways and things like that. So I'm going to move on to the next slide here. Uh, yeah, we do a lot of speaking events. We do a lot of things throughout the year. Um, Dr. Collier is, is really involved with networking with people in the criminal justice community. Um, and it's not just one sided, which is great. You know, we look at the offender side of it and we look at the law enforcement side of it. And um, a lot of times, a lot of social justice issues will arise and, um, and we'll bring people into these events that have been on both sides of the system you know we've we've brought in people to speak to our students who have actually been exonerated of crimes people who have actually been arrested and um and then like i said we we bring in law enforcement speakers so it's a good mix so i think that um you know by the time you get to the end of the program you've seen a lot you know you've seen the practical aspect of it you've seen the um the theoretical aspect of it You've been exposed to a lot, you know, on both sides. So, um, so yeah, you get a really great mix. Um, so the student experience, obviously I'm not a student. Um, I have been a student in the criminal justice department, um, not at APU. Um, I was supposed to have a, a student speak, speak tonight and um, assist with my presentation. And unfortunately um, she wasn't able to be here. But I would I would say just just from my observation as a professor, um, it's it's a really close knit community. Um, everybody knows each other. Uh, people in the major uh, become friends, um, and you're able to connect with your faculty members uh, easily. Uh, it's not like being at a big school where you know you're sort of anonymous. It's like everybody knows you and you know them, and you kind of share this experience together. Um, that's been my observation, sort of from the outside looking in as a professor, kind of, kind of um, observing my students. Um, we're really easy to connect with as professors. Uh, you know, uh, we have small class sizes. Uh, we're easy, like I said, to uh, to access, and which is good, which is a great benefit um, in the classroom and outside of the classroom. In the classroom, because you know, if a student has a question, I'm able to address it. Uh, and it's, um, I think it, I think it kind of creates a homey feeling within the department. You know, we've, we've shared a lot of ups and downs in our department. And um, we've shared some tragedies, some losses, and some victories. Uh, I've seen students, um, I've had students pass away in the last 
four or five years. I know nobody wants to hear that. Um, and I've had students become police officers. And, um, and so, yeah, you, you know, you become vested in the department. And it's more than just a major or, you know, um, an academic discipline, but you start to care for people. I have students who they've, um, they've been in touch with me uh, since, since 2016. I'll have students still email me, call me, ask me for references, and I give them references. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's an awesome thing to see them move on and to, um, to get in you know, to, to get into their academic, I'm sorry, to their career field, um, whether it's being a police officer or a lawyer or went into law school. So um, we're here with, we're here for our students and we care about them. And I can honestly say that um, it's a heartfelt thing. And, you know, we love our students and the other professors in the department. I, I think I can, I can speak for them when I say that. And um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, I would, I'd be more than happy to answer them. So I think that's kind of the end of my presentation. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, if you don't mind, could you stop sharing um, your screen for us, please? Sure. That was super informative though, and I'm sure that answered a ton of questions for all of the potential criminal justice majors. Um, awesome. Well, I know we still need to hear from um, Melanie about the psychology program and then Professor Guzman, I know you wanted to talk more about social work and what, what each program has to offer. So um, Professor Guzman, if you would like to start and then Melanie, you can go right after. Sure, thanks Raylan. Um, it's good to be with everyone tonight. Again, I'm Daniel Guzman, I'm the field education coordinator for the Bachelors of Social Work program. Um, I'm also an assistant professor and conduct seminar courses. Um, and something I want to do tonight to get us started is to try to get a sense of the scope of the field of social work, because a lot of times the information about social work is very limited. And when I talk to students, I talk to family members, I talk to people in the community, and I say that I'm in social work, they automatically think child protective services foster care, adoptions. And that is a big part of social work, but sometimes it seems like that's the only part of social work for a lot of people. And it, that is absolutely not the truth. And social work has such a far reaching um, range into the community. You know, in social work, you can work with individuals like in mental health, counseling, um, you can work in a school setting, you can work in a hospital, you can work with veterans, substance use, trauma. You know, uh, the other day on Monday, we hosted an event uh, where we talked about elections and there's an advocacy piece uh, to social work. And in that event we hosted and we had uh, as one of our panelists, uh, Senator Anthony Portentino of local uh, district nearby. Uh, we had other advocates who work on a national level from Washington, D.C. And so social work is a very wide ranging field and there's a lot of choices if you wanna help people. And so something about our, our program that, you know, I really wanna highlight uh, tonight is that with a social work degree, you are ready for employment. We are an accredited program by a national accrediting body, which we've had for uh, about 25 years. So it's a very well established accreditation that we have. And with that accreditation, you walk out with people knowing that you have been through a program, you have been educated, and you have been trained in a wide range of social work functions, abilities, and skills. And so a lot of our students, you know, they, of course, they want to know, where do I get my job? How do I get my job? And we can lead you uh, in that direction. And that degree really puts a stamp on what you know. You know, something else that uh, we pride ourselves in in our program is that we're experiential in our learning. You know, everyone learns different ways and we try to cover all the bases. You know, we teach you academically, you know, through, you know, readings and videos and lecture and discussions. Um, and so we, we, try to, we try to stimulate you that way. But there's the experiential piece where we actually ask you to practice those skills 
those theories, those frameworks that you're learning in class. And so most of your classes will have a service learning component to it. Some programs, some of our service learning opportunities involve working with local middle schools and kids at the middle schools. Uh, some of those service learning will work with uh, older adults. And something that's you know a part of our program uh, is that every senior has to participate in an internship for their senior year, which we help uh, provide for the student. So for that full year, uh, a student is placed at an internship site where they get to learn how to practice either on a micro level, working with individuals and families, or a macro level, uh, working as a broader community. And so we really value the experiential learning aspect of the program. Uh, research is another big component of our program. Uh, we have an uh, applied research course that lasts throughout the senior year. And so courses building up to that will help students prepare for how to research, how to write in an academic way, um, how, to, how to think critically. Um, but in the senior year part of it, you're writing and you're doing a full-fledged research project based on your internship. So we're trying to link those components up. So you're prepared, you know, intellectually with the knowledge and skills, you practice those skills and you research to gain more depth into what you know as a social worker. And then finally, something that, you know, is really something that we offer as a program that not many others do. And that's faith integration component. You know, really talking about like, how does my faith, how does the faiths of the people are in my community play a part on their mental health, the way that they, they see the world, how they make meaning of different events that happen in their lives. And these are the things that we, we talk to students about, we walk them through throughout the program so that when they get out there into the field, they feel like, okay, like I have a self-awareness. I know uh, what I believe and I, and I also have an understanding about others and how I can help them without necessarily imposing my views, but really being that example, being that light uh, in this profession where we work so closely with people. And I think if you have a heart to serve and you really are just really open to, you know, uh, figuring out what you want to do to, to channel that, you know, I uh, want to encourage you to, you know, reach out to us. I'll be providing our webpage link in the chat box in a little bit, but I encourage you to, to look into social work, check out the, our department and, and see how it might be a good fit for you. Melanie, Melanie, uh, please. T let us know about the psychology and the, all the things that you have going on too. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, so like social work, um, psychology is a really broad major as well. You can do a lot of different things. So our psych major on campus is one of the largest departments. Um, we compete with kinesiology pretty, pretty well there with being one of the larger departments. And the reason for that is we actually have several different options you can do within psychology. So we have a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology, which is for students who um, just want to go into any of the fields of psychology that can be clinical or research or um, if you don't know what you want to do yet you might go down that path and then there's also a bachelor of science degree in psychology that one is going to be a little bit more neuroscience related specifically for the students who are wanting to potentially go into med school. Um, I did notice a few questions in the chat box about um, preparing for medical school and the BS in psychology would be uh, one of the routes that you can take to get there. Um, so those are our two undergrad degrees and then we also have grad degrees that you can take. Um, I am actually a two-time psychology alum of APU. I did my undergrad at APU in psychology, and then I also did one of our grad programs. I got a master's in research psychology. So I'm very familiar with our programs, and let me tell you, there's so many options. Um, one of the best things that you can do from the very beginning is you will be put into a living learning community or a learning community. All of our students, when they are freshmen or transfer students, if you're a, um, an incoming transfer, 
you will be placed into a learning community. And that is an opportunity for you as a freshman or first time psych major to be in two classes with other psych majors on campus. One of the things that I like was just not sure about when I first came to APU was like, how do I make friends? How do I know who's another psych major? Like, how do you get to know people? Um, so one of the things we created were these communities where you as a freshman will take um, GE 100 together, which is our first year seminar class, kind of introducing you to the major um, and to the university as a whole. I actually teach that class, so it's my personal favorite. Um, and that will be with other freshman psychology majors. Uh, you'll live in the dorms together as well and really create some besties in the in the department. Um, you'll also take another psychology class that freshman year um, with those same students and another full time faculty member, again, to create those strong bonds. Um, we're all about cultivating friendships and difference makers at APU. And so that first step is kind of finding like, where your footing is by taking some of those lower division psychology classes. Um, we have 25 full time faculty members in the department. So each of them do a different branch of psychology. Um, so why we do that is because we have several different psychology classes you can take to try and figure out what you might want to do when you graduate. Um, so something we really encourage is for you guys to do research with those faculty members. So um, I know Matthew, one of our students, and Celeste um, have been doing research excuse me, since they became students at APU, um, you can start that as early as your freshman year. So um, similar to social work, we have these experiences where you get to get your feet wet in the field and figure out if this is something you want to do. Um, so we have a research experience course and a field experience course. Um, I personally took the field experience course, and that was how I discovered I don't want to work with kids. Okay, I say that as a joke, but that's the reason we throw you out there. Um, that field experience course, you get placed um, in an internship setting um, in a field of psychology that you think you want to go into. Um, so for me, I thought I for sure wanted to be like a child therapist. So I went and shadowed someone who was a child therapist, and I also did um, some daycare type of um, service learning. And I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to do this. And that was awesome. Honestly, even though I found out I didn't want to do that, it helped me solidify what I do want to do. So we try to make all of our classes in psychology, those hands on experiential learning pieces, where you get to get your toes wet and kind of feel around um, what you want to do. Another thing that's really cool is we have um, a major that's set up in such a way that we overlap with your GE classes. So if you plan your schedule right, and that's what us faculty members are here for, you can take one class that satisfies a GE requirement and a psychology requirement, kind of kill two birds with one stone. The benefit of doing that is it leaves you some extra room in your schedule before you graduate to take some fun classes. And what you can do with those fun classes are either take a minor, so a lot of our students will major in psychology and minor in criminal justice, or you can take a grad class. Now this is important because you can actually take up to nine units as an undergrad student in one of our graduate programs, which means you're also starting ahead on your master's while you're still an undergrad. And it's the same cost as undergrad. So your parents will love you later for making it a little bit cheaper. Um, so you can do that. You can take some of our grad programs or you can also study abroad. Now we go to 30 different locations across the world um, for study abroad opportunities. I personally went to South Africa when I was a sophomore at APU and it was probably the best decision of my entire life. Uh, we studied in Cape Town, South Africa. I did internship experiences there. I dove with sharks, which was absolutely terrifying. Went bungee jumping. Um, I made some of my closest friendships out in another country. Um, I also still talk to some of the homestay families that I stayed with. Um, so that's a really cool piece of the major as well. Um, we actually have a psychology cohort that goes to a few different locations, um, South Africa, Spain, um, Ecuador, we're adding a few more like Kenya and um, Ethiopia is another one that we're trying to add. Um, so that's a really cool piece that you can kind of slide into your psychology major when because you have the room to do so according to your classes. 
Um, so it's kind of the classroom piece. We also have some clubs. So we have a psychology club where they do a whole bunch of different things on campus. We've had some guest speakers um, come and talk about what you can do with the field of psychology. We have volunteered at the local middle school, um, teaching middle school children about what psychology is all about. Um, they also do fundraising events. We have cool t-shirts that we just redesigned. Uh, we do giveaways, all types of fun things. And then we also have an honor society. So the honor society is a nationally recognized um, society for students who are in the top 10% of their major in college. And um, you get a cool medallion to wear for graduation. And you also get access to all of the honor society um, fun items like presentations, conferences, scholarships, which is key. Um, there's a lot of opportunity there as well for our top students. So um, we do a lot of fun things in the department. We do research with children, um, marriage and family. We have a child life program, um, which is for students who wanna work in um, a hospital type setting. Um, we also have a research program for students who wanna maybe go on to grad school and are looking for a research or data analytics type of job. There's a lot of different opportunities. So um, I also wanna give the opportunity for Matthew and Celeste to kind of pop on here and talk about their student experiences since they were both psych majors. Um, so I'm gonna have them tell you about what, how they became a psych major, what, what led them to choosing psychology and their favorite thing about um, the psychology department so far. So Celeste, if you are here, I'll have you start for us and then we'll go over to Matthew. Okay. Um, I love the question of how did you get into the psych major because, well, I always knew I wanted to do psych. That's not the exciting part. The exciting part is that I went to like one of AP's events, events for prospective students. And afterward, I go up to one of the professors. I'm like, hey, I want to do this for my like career. Do you have any tips, any advice? And she was like, you should have dinner with me and my husband. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, when you get here, if you decide to come here, like find me and we will meet and like, we can talk all about it. And I ended up going there and then I got to the school and I connected with her and I had dinner with her and her husband and she mentors me to this day. And I think that is a huge testament to the dynamic at APU, the professors really do care and they see you. I've been to so many professors homes for dinner and studying and all of these things. Um, and I think that that's huge because they want you to learn it's important to them and then later on when you're trying to get some letters of recommendation for grad school super helpful because it's not this like generic stamp of approval hey this student is probably good to go they're like no personally i know this student let me tell you why um and i think that's just extremely helpful throughout your four years or however long you're here it's extremely helpful um and then my favorite thing about the program I'm trying to keep it quick um just some great classes that i actually feel like I'm learning things, you know, in my everyday to day life. I'm like, oh, I learned this in a class and I feel equipped to tell you about it. I took a community um, psychology class and we did a project with a nonprofit where we got to help them with something. I took counseling classes. And when I tell y'all, I'm like, basically like a little therapist, like not formal, but like, I kind of know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but great professors who actually care and great classes where you can really learn the things that you're trying to learn and you'll feel prepared by the end of the four years if you do the work you'll feel prepared so I think those are important things yeah I think Celeste shared a very beautiful experience which is I, I would want to say that's so unique and it totally is but professors um, do this all the time and that's what's so beautiful and her experience was so unique um, and I have a very similar experience, which I wasn't even planning on um, that happening, but it's just to show that APU professors um, really are um, really motivated to get to know you as a person. You're not just another name in their classroom. And um, as I, this is only my second year at APU, and in my freshman, I took a gen psych class. Um, and gen psych, generally APU is not, um, most classes are generally like 20 to 30 students, but this one had about 60 students. Um, so one of the larger classes, I guess you could say at APU, um, and it was just a lecture. And I finished the class, um, loved the class. And then next semester, 
um, I moved on and continued to like take classes in the psychology major. And that professor reached out to me and was like, hey, Matthew, I just want to know um, how you're doing. And it was just one of those moments of like, whoa, I was one student in a class of maybe 60 plus people. Um, and you thought about me and my name and wanted to reach out and see how I was doing. Um, and so I love that Celeste shared that experience because there's so many um, of those little moments that you're going to have at APU of people acknowledging like, I want to be a part of your journey, whether it's peers, whether it's faculty, whether it's professors who are just um, so accomplished in their fields. Um, they are so excited to um, walk alongside you guys and help you guys get to where you want to go. Um, and I came into APU similar to Celeste, like I kind of know what I'm passionate about, but I'm not for sure, like is a psych major for me? Um, and in two years already, I already know it's for me, but um, it's been so awesome for my professors, um, specifically um, my mentor now, Dr. Collison, um, he continually reaches out to me. And right now I'm kind of looking to go towards the research route and exploring what research and psychology looks like. Um, and for summer programs, um, he's able to write me letters of rec and not just talking about things that um, I give to him on a paper like Matthew Campos and these are all what I've done, you know, try to write something like he knows me personally, he knows my character, he knows my passions, he knows what I'm excited to pursue. Um, and that's a really, really unique experience um, that you'll have at APU. Um, yeah, because we don't say this lightly, professors really love um, to get to know students and walk alongside them in their college journey. And yeah, probably one of my favorite classes um, that I've taken is this semester. I'm taking a bilingualism, biculturalism, and cognition class, which sounds like a mouthful, um, but it's super interesting. I was um, on the BA track, um, so far still am, but getting that exposure to that cognition, that neuroscience, um, and getting to decide at this point and having that flexibility to decide if I wanna go into a BA or BS um, is really an awesome experience that we have at APU. Um, so hopefully just in the energy of my voice, um, you guys could hear how truly um, blessed and excited that I've been to be in this department um, and just really grateful for the faculty, um, peer and professor mentorship that I've had so far. Ah, oh, man, thank you guys so much. Melody, did you have something to say? Oh, I was just going to add one final piece uh, just as a general statement, especially after hearing the students talk is like, it's okay if you also don't know your major before you get to APU. Um, I personally changed my major five times <laughs> before landing on psychology. And that's just because of the nature of APU as well. Um, so some of the classes might solidify a path for you. Others might tell you like, hey, yeah, I don't really wanna do that. And that's okay. So you might be in this informational meeting about social work, criminal justice and psychology for right now. Um, but if you want to switch around, like there's advisors and admissions counselors to help you with that too. So thank you guys for sharing your pieces too. Yeah, thanks for saying that. Yeah, it's so true. Um, we just want to help you guys figure it out. So if you don't know, then that is what we're here for. So just really good to hear um, Matthew and Celeste, your experiences and good to hear about the other majors. Um, makes me want to go back and redo undergrad and just learn more. Um, but I was a psychology major, so I was able to um, take psychology from some of those amazing professors. And it was just awesome. It was an amazing experience. Um, and so, yeah, but we have so many questions coming in. So we're going to get started since we only have um, about 15 minutes left, maybe a little bit more than 15 minutes. But um, yeah, we'll just get started. So the first one is for Professor Guzman. Um, is it possible to have a minor as a psychology major or is the coursework too heavy? Yeah, there are students that have minors. So uh, for instance, a minor in a language, I think that's, that's a popular one, more specifically Spanish because a lot of the community, at least around here is, you know, speak Spanish. So students have uh, minors in Spanish. I know um, another student, who has a, a minor minor in a, I believe it's like theology or ministry. That's another big one. Uh, so that it is possible to, to have a minor and uh, be a social work major. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Um, and I, I think you'll find that with a lot of majors at APU, you can have a minor or you can double major or 
double mine or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, if you have more questions about that, feel free to ask your admissions counselor or faculty. Okay, this one is for Professor Rocha. Um, this, per, this student says, my goal is to one day become a homicide detective, but my dream job is to become an FBI agent. Is criminal justice my best choice in APU in terms of reaching my dream job? Yeah, I think so. So when you talk about becoming a homicide detective, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, when you talk about becoming a homicide detective, you, you start out as a police officer. So all detectives are cops or basic detectives, police officers, um, sheriff deputies um, when they start out. So everybody starts out as a patrol officer. So if you, you know, just for practical purposes, if, if you got a job with Azusa Police Department or Glendora Police Department or the Alley County Sheriff, you would start out as just a deputy or a police officer and you sort of work your way up to a detective. Um, and, you know, that takes a few years. It might take four to five years. If you have a degree, that's definitely a plus because they're going to consider you a lot closer than they are somebody who doesn't have that edu that level of education. So um, I, think I, I think I was explaining earlier, um, I had a student who emailed me and asked me how they could prepare themselves. And I said, hey, the fact that you're just here getting your degree and earning course units and taking classes and getting this kind of exposure um, is a huge, a huge benefit and it's putting you way above the competition. So yeah, I mean, if you wanna be a police officer, be prepared to work the streets for a couple of years, a sheriff deputy. Um, and a lot of people will ask that question, what's the difference between a cop and a deputy? That's kind of funny, it's the same thing. So when we talk about police officers, we're usually talking about city police. So I'll make it practical for you again. Uh, Laverne PD, Claremont PD, Azusa PD, Covina PD, those are police officers because those are police departments. Alley County Sheriff, deputies, because that's the Sheriff's Department. They all serve the same function. The Sheriff's Department, the difference between the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department is police departments serve cities. Sheriff's Departments serve the unincorporated areas of the county. In other words, the areas that the police don't serve or a lot of times smaller cities that don't have their own police departments like Dwarty, they will hire the, the local sheriff's department to they'll contract with them to actually provide law enforcement services. So yeah, if you want to be a, a, a homicide detective, I would say be prepared to be a, a, a lying police officer. Go, you're going to go out on patrol, you're going to do all the regular stuff that cops do, and you're going to sort of work your way up. That, that degree is going to give you an advantage. Um, but if you want to um, jump right into investigation work, then you can do that at state or federal level. State, or, state and federal law enforcement positions typically require a, a, a bachelor's degree, but you, you're not going to have to go out on patrol. You can jump right into the FBI. You can jump right into the ATF. You can jump right into state investigation work without having um, to go out on patrol. So, so, so I guess you got to kind of figure it out if you want to, if you want to go out on patrol, but if you ultimately want to become a, a detective, then be prepared to be a police officer or a sheriff deputy. Um, if you want to jump straight into investigation work, you don't want to drive a black and white, but you want to carry a gun and a badge and do all the cool stuff, well, you're probably going to want to go into uh, federal work, FBI, ATF, uh, state investigation work. And, um, and what's what's cool about our department is we provide you with those resources. We have a lot of, we have a huge network of people who've worked in these fields, who can advise you, um, who can kind of guide you and tell you, hey, you know what, um, for what you're interested in, you should probably look here or there. So does that kind of answer your question? Totally, yeah, thank you so much. Um, all really good information. Um, okay, we have one for Professor Guzman. Uh, what classes do you need to become a social worker? So students enter their uh, social work major. Typically you can enter as a sophomore, but a lot of times it's as a junior. And uh, the classes leading up to it, you really wanna take a, I encourage all students with one of your electives, take intro to social work. That's a really good class to see like, because it covers the breadth of social work. And so you're able to kind of see like, 
does this interest me or not? Do I really want to invest, you know, these next, you know, couple of years of my uh, education into social work? So I encourage you, even if, you know, you're not sure, take an intro to social work class, but I think just your typical general classes that uh, most students have to take uh, will help you get into uh, the social work a program and then once you're in you're going to take practice courses you're going to take human behavior and social environment courses um research courses uh, other special electives that you get to take but your typical general classes will cover you for uh, the social work major thank you yeah thank you um that's great um so this we've had a few questions about forensics um, but melanie is there a specific forensic psychology class that's available to students or is there coordination between criminal justice and psychology? What does that look like? Yeah, so we coordinate on that class with the criminal justice department. So um, if that forensic psychology class is actually housed in the criminal justice department, our students take that all the time. Um, in fact, uh, Dr. Eklund is the chair of our department and her husband um, works as a DA. And um, so he often teaches that class um, for the department. So um, yeah, there's a lot of overlap and a lot of our students who major in psychology will minor in criminal justice specifically if they're wanting to go into that forensic psychology field. Perfect. That's super helpful. Um, okay, this is a great question um, for Professor Guzman. How do you integrate Christ in the social work major? Yeah, I love that question. Again, I think it's just such a special thing about being at APU is that we get to discuss this and talk about it. And, you know, for me, my, my training and my experiences as a clinical social worker, as a therapist. And so my job experience is working in a secular field, but working with families and uh, children, also adults in a, uh, different situations. And something that we do as a program is throughout the coursework, we really try to help students, one, figure out where their beliefs come from and how it plays a part in how they make meaning of the world, how they see themselves as, you know, either a, a servant for Christ or where kind of where their passion lies. And then we help them to think about okay, their community and what is it that, that other people are experiencing? How are they kind of figuring out like, wow, what does all this mean? And, and so we teach specific skills like, how to be an active listener, you know, how to identify needs, how to search and develop resources so that, you know, we're really not only addressing, you know, the immediate concerns, but we're also looking at the bigger environmental picture and helping people to connect with their community, uh, with their faith and do it in a, in a way that's congruent with their belief system and how they see the world. That's awesome. Yeah, I really enjoyed the integration aspect of APU and just learning more about how to integrate psychology and, and faith. Um, but I would actually love to hear from Matthew and Celeste. How do you find that you've been able to integrate Christ into your studies? Yeah, I'll start us off with this one. Yeah, so a really cool thing about going to APU, and I think um, whether it's your main focus or not your main focus in coming to APU. Um, me, I was really excited to go to a Christian college and explore that overlap. Um, and especially um, for those of you guys who are maybe um, raised in the church or familiar with kind of the um, church or Christian setting, a lot of questions that students have is like, what does the overlap look like between psychology and my faith? And that is something that professors really take the time to explore and explain um, and to encourage a diversity in thought. Students come from all different faith backgrounds, um, all different religious backgrounds, um, and students have those questions of like, I want to be a clinical psychologist or I want to be a therapist. Um, but, you know, some um, some people have questions in my family about what that looks like in the Christian context or in a Christian setting. And what's really beautiful is um, professors take on that question and they tackle it. And they, like I said, they want students um, to have an open dialogue about what that looks like, but um, actively along the way, walking us through that there is an overlap um, and that you very much can 
um, go into the therapy setting um, or any setting that you want to go with. Not all students go into the clinical counseling setting. Um, and with that, a lot of classes have like a specific faith integration portion of the class um, that they directly focus on, whether it's an assignment, whether it's like a research, um, short research task, or even getting students involved um, in the community and answering that question themselves. So um, professors definitely um, take that question head on and encourage discussion within the class of what that looks like um, for each student from all different backgrounds. You know, Matthew did a great job. We're just going to leave it there because he pretty much covered all of it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, you guys. Um, so we are almost out of time, which is crazy. I feel like this time has just flown by and we have so many questions, um, but our admissions counselor, Taylor is really working hard at getting a lot of those questions answered. But to end, I would love to ask um, each of you what your advice is. And this is just a quick, um, quick answer, but what your advice is for these incoming students as, we, like, move, as they move forward in the um, college process. And um, Professor Rocha, if you wanna go first, and then Melanie, and then Professor Guzman. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't hear you, you're muted. So sorry. There you go. Now? Can you hear me now? Okay, awesome. Um, I would, I think I just kind of told you guys about a, about a student that emailed me yesterday or this morning um, about how they could prepare themselves to go into the field. And, uh, and, and a lot of things I shared with, with him uh, were kind of sort of practical, you know, and, um, but then at the end, I, I thought about sort of the spiritual aspect of it and um, how when you when you start to plot out your career, you plot out your life, whether it's a career or a life partner or whatever it is, you always want to seek the Lord's wisdom, you know, in his guidance. And us being a Christian university, I think a lot of times we skip over that. Um, and that's interesting that I said that, right? Us being a Christian university, we skip over that. That's an interesting statement because we do, you know. And a lot of time, a lot of times, I think it becomes very academic for us, you know, and um, and it sh shouldn't just ever be academic. It should always be with the um, with the mindset that, hey, does God want me here? Does God want me to pursue this major? What does God want from me you know, in um, in terms of my life decisions? So I always advise my students to do that. I'm like, hey, you know what? You know, do do your research. Um, in terms of like you know what you want to do and in, in the field but always seek out god's advice too and ask the lord if this is something that you really want you to do and how you can serve other people with it and how you can glorify him with it and so that's i think that's probably one of my greatest pieces of advice is when you're going to enter this field whatever field you're going to enter what whether it's psychology or social work or criminal justice um be be smart be practical do your research and also seek God's guidance. That's great advice. I would echo <laughs> echo that and also add, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions and explore. Um, one of the best things you can do for yourself, I think um, Professor Guzman like said it best is take the intro classes. We have intro classes specifically designed to introduce you to that field, whether it's psychology, social work, criminal justice, like almost every major on campus has an intro class. And APU has designed the course load in such a way that really allows you to explore that. So from the moment you step on campus, the very first class you'll take is a first year seminar, which introduces you to college and to whatever major you're thinking about but you don't have to be stuck there. Um, if you wanna bounce around and you're like, hey, I think I wanna try something out, great. Like I said, I changed my major five times, okay? You have plenty of room. I will say, talk to your professors and an academic advisor if you're trying to decide between a few. Um, the best thing you can do is talk to students in the program and say like, hey, what made you interested in this program? Or sit in on a class or find someone in the hallways and say like, hey, what'd you think about that class? Is it cool? Is it interesting? Um, and then also 
do some of those experiential classes. Um, we've had students, um, I had a student two years ago who was thinking about going into organizational psychology. And so she got an internship with the Clippers, which was really cool, um, and did her internship and figured out like, yeah, this is absolutely what I want to do. And work psych is the route I want to go. Other students, like I said, have done a um, field in working with children and decided like yes or no, that's exactly where they want to be. And these classes have those pieces built into them to allow you to explore that a little bit more. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to sit in on some classes that you're not sure about. Um, there's elective units specifically designed for you to do that um, and talk to us. We love talking to students about everything you guys have. So that's my advice. All right, I'll just squeeze in one last thing. Make friends, <laughs> make friends. Support the support that you need that you can give will make all the difference in your experience. And I, I know it sounds simple, it sounds obvious, but it does take some effort. It takes you getting out there, maybe being a little vulnerable and, and getting, you know, getting involved, but make friends when you get here. Yes, that is all really amazing advice that I wish that I heard when I was in their positions. But um, before we end, um, if each of you professors could put the department emails in the chat to the attendees, that would be super helpful. Um, we will get all of your questions answered. I know we didn't get to a lot, um, but we have run out of time, which is so sad. I wish we could continue talking, but um, yeah, so their emails are there. Um, if you have additional questions that the admissions team can help with, we are here for you um, and we would love to answer questions. Um, and if you don't know who your admissions counselor is, just send an email to the UG admissions at apu.edu um, email address and we'll make sure that um, you get that you get connected to your admissions counselor. Um, but I just wanna thank you guys for coming. Thank you professors and students for coming and just chatting with us and answering questions. That is just such a uh, honor to just hear your experiences and your thoughts about the programs. But thank you students. Um, I know it's a crazy time, but we are rooting for you and we are supporting you. So if you have questions or anything, again, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, but I hope you all have a great night and I hope you all stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.